Hi everybody, my name is Debbie Ray and I'm the owner of PedigreePups.com and today I'd like to take a couple of minutes to share some information with you about one of the other AKC dog breed groups. Today I would like to talk with you about the Sporting Dog Group. Now what exactly is the Sporting Dog Group? Well the AKC Sporting Dog Group contains dog breeds that were bred to help man find and retrieve different kinds of game in both the water and also in the field. Now these dogs are well known for their incredible instincts uh, in hunting and many of these dogs continue to participate actively in hunting and other kinds of field trials even today. These dogs are well known for actively uh, retrieving and hunting game being, be it you know, feathered or furred. These dogs do need regular exercise on a very frequent schedule and these dogs are also well known for their easygoing temperaments and the fact that they for the most part make little, to, little noise overall. These are very intelligent dogs and they also uh, possess a willingness to please their owners. So you know what are the members of the sporting dog breed group? Well, Let's talk about them as of uh, all the members that were in the group as of March 25th 2008. Now the first dog we'll talk about is the American Water Spaniel. Now the American Water Spaniel is also the state dog of Wisconsin. These dogs have a friendly, eager to please attitude and they can fit in with almost any family. This is an American breed and this little Spaniel is, um, you know, they originated around the mid 1800s and they were also the first dog breed to develop in the United States as both an all round hunter that could also retrieve from boats. These dogs hunt both feathered and furred game. They're very good with children and other pets, and uh, you want to make sure that you know, this dog is known to yodel, so you know they do have a tendency to bark, so just be forewarned. Now the Brittany is a natural pointer, and these make an excellent retriever, and they're also a very good hunting companion. These dogs were developed in the 1800s as a breed of gun dog, primarily bred for bird hunting. They're also very active and very enthusiastic dogs. And this dog breed can be very, you know, resistant to both cold and to damp conditions. Now these dog breeds need a lot of room to run and they're not recommended for apartment life because of this. They are very, uh, very good dogs to be around as far as their demeanor. They're very jolly and they do make very, very good companion dogs. Now the next dog we'll talk about is the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Now these dogs also originated in the United States and they were developed to hunt waterfowl in the most adverse water, you know, water and weather and just nasty conditions possible. This dog breed is known for its prowess in rough icy water, often having to break ice in order to be able to make its retrieve. Now these dogs have webbed feet and swimming ability is a very important skill for these dogs. Training is essential with the Chessie. And there is a great phrase that applies to these dogs. You can order a lab, ask a golden, but you must negotiate with a Chesapeake. These dogs have um, very high uh, exercise requirements. Their grooming needs are, are, are nowhere near as high. They're relatively low. But these dogs are definitely not the, the choice of a dog for any apartment dweller or couch potato. Now the next dog is a Clumber Spaniel. Now this dog is much longer and low and it's heavier. Uh, he has a white coat and this enables a dog to be seen by the hunter when they're out in the field. Now disadvantages of owning a clumber spaniel are often said to be that the dog snores, that they constantly shed, that they drool a lot, especially after getting a drink, and that they have a particularly inventive mind. And these dogs are easily able to, you know, raid your cabinets or your kitchen counters or even the refrigerator if given the chance. Clumber Spaniel puppies are also said to have this particularly curious inventive mind. These dogs possess a very strong urge to carry something in their mouths at all times, especially if it has their owner's scent on it. So this might easily mean that, you know, your socks turn up missing or your shoes or a piece of clothing or whatever, anything that the Clumber could deem as being toy worthy. Now the Cocker Spaniel uh, consists of two breeds now, both the American and the English. Now the American Cocker Spaniel evolved from their British counterparts and by around the 1930s these dogs were given a separate breed status. Even later on they were further divided into three color types, the black, party color, and the ASCOB, which means any solid color other than black, ASCOB, any solid color other than black.
Now, the American Cocker Spaniel is rarely seen hunting today, and most often these dogs are seen as a family pet or a show dog. However, the English Cocker Spaniel is much more like the working dogs out in the field, such as the Field Spaniel or the Springers. And these dogs, uh, the, co the Cocker Spaniels in general, are the smallest member of the sporting group. These dogs are well known and probably uh, best for their proficiency with woodcock, and these dogs are very, very popular. Now the curly-coated retriever is considered to be one of the oldest of the, um, of the retriever breeds. The curly is also the largest of all the retriever breeds. It has a very easy to care for coat and its curls stay in place with little to no attention. Even the dog's ears, the back of its neck, head, and its tail are covered with tiny curls. The uh, perfect curly coat is a dense of mass, small, excuse me, it's a dense mass of small, tight, you know, distinct curls, and these dogs are a single coated breed. The only acceptable color for these dogs are sil solid silver, liver, sorry, solid liver or solid black. The perfect exercise for these dogs can be summed up in one word, swimming. Now this high energy dog needs a lot of exercise and mental stimulation to keep it truly happy. So, you know, for that reason, this is definitely not the dog breed for a lazy owner. Now the English Setter has a very unique and beautiful speckled coat. In fact, this is often seen as the hallmark of the breed. Now this speckling that appears on the coat can be more or less heavy, you know, from dog to dog, and the markings can be of any size on the dog. Now, English setters were trained to be bird dogs back in England more than 400 years ago. Now, these dogs will be comfortable in, in the show ring or at home with you or out in the field. It doesn't matter to them. All these types of sitters need uh, frequent grooming and a lot of exercise. And they're very gentle, affectionate dogs, and they're very friendly. And they're better suited to owners who have, you know, a lot of land for them to run around and exercise on. Now the English Springer Spaniel is a medium sized sporting dog. These dogs have a very compact body and a dot, de uh, dot tail. These dogs also love everybody. They're very good with other pets except birds and assuming that they're thoroughly socialized in early age they'll, they'll get along with just about everybody. Now, these dogs do love water and they're often known for getting wet and muddy. Uh, taken as a whole however the English Springer Spaniel suggests a dog of power, endurance, and great agility. Now these dogs look like a dog that could just keep on going and going and going. The typical Springer Spaniel is friendly, eager to please, quick to learn, and very willing to obey their master. Now the Field Spaniel was the first Spaniel dog breed developed specifically for confirmation showing. These dogs remain among the rarest of the many Spaniel breeds and they're slightly heavier and longer in body shape than the Cocker Spaniel. In keeping with the retrieving nature, these dogs love to carry any sort of object around in their mouths at all times. Additionally, they like to snore, or they tend to snore, they like to travel, and they maintain a very diverse vocal range. This dog has a high energy and enthusiasm for hunting, and they're also very affectionate and a great companion dog. It's important for owners of these dogs to make sure that they have a good fence surrounding your property, otherwise the dog may just take off and leave you after some interesting scent. Now the flat-coated spaniel is a very uh, responsive, loving member of the family. These are a very versatile working dog. They're multi-talented, very sensible, and very intelligent. Be advised, the flatty, like many other intelligent animals, are very easily bored with repetitive tasks. So that if you know if you make them do the same thing over and over and over, they're probably going to be a bit rebellious and maybe even refuse what you want them to do. Socialization is very highly recommended with this dog breed. Flat coats often frequently kiss their human friends and their canine friends as well, and they're well known for this flat coat kiss. And this is where the dogs lick each other's mouths as well, as their you know as their former greeting. As a pet, the flat coat adapts easily to city life, but they do require a considerable amount of exercise and activity. Now, the German wire hair and the German short hair pointers are both hardy dogs who make great companions in the field or also at home. These dogs are very willing to please and they're very versatile hunters. Uh, they're both all-purpose gun dogs and they're capable of high performance in both the field or the water. Short hair pointers are very good with children and other pets, you know, under proper su supervision while they're young and while, you know, as long as they're appropriately socialized. And if you look on the left, you'll see a short hair pointer. 
Now the wire hair pointers are balanced in size also. These are very sturdily built dogs and probably their most distinguishing characteristics are its weather resistant wire like coat and those cute facial furnishings. Now the Jordan pointers need a lot of exercise, both of them, but they will adapt easily to a small yard as long as they get long walks and they need to be brushed frequently. These dogs will be best suited to a family that's very active and willing to, you know, commit to the exercise requirements needed for this dog breed or for either of these dog breeds. Now the Golden Retriever is a great hunter. They're also a good family pet and a show dog. They make ideal family pets because of their good nature and also because, you know, they're such a just a multi-purpose dog. These dogs can easily adapt to living in a small apartment if they need to. You know, songs are given plenty of exercise. They're also well known for their flowing coat and their loving attitudes and their very sweet expression. These dogs do well in obedience and agility trials and they also make the best assistant dogs. Um, these dogs are also very tolerant of children and excel in obedience and therapy dog tasks. And most of these dogs like to swim as well. These are very good dogs with pets and other children and the best home for Goldens is inside with a family pack where there's lots of outdoor activities. And the next dog we'll talk about is the Gordon Setter. Now this is the largest, heaviest, and the slowest working of all the Setter breeds. Now these dogs also make uh, great family companions. This dog should be introduced to all types of situations early on as a young puppy to produce the best well-balanced dog. Weekly brushing of the coat is a must. Typically these dogs are very protective of their family and children but they're not aggressive unless they are you know, threatened. This is the only black and white, or excuse me, black and tan setter breed known today. This breed does need a lot of exercise, so keep that in mind if you decide to add a Gordon setter to your family. These dogs uh, also need a fenced-in yard, and if you consider owning one of these dogs, you know that would be a very good idea because they do like to wander. Now, the Irish Setter are, are very well known for being friendly dogs and highly affectionate. Addi additionally, these dogs are lovable, they're high spirited, they're full of energy, uh, they're very active and aristocratic bird dogs, and they're a very swift moving hunter, and they're well known for that beautiful rich red coat. Now these dogs can uh, appear in various shades of, of coat color from anywhere from chestnut to mahogany. Now this setter's coat does require weekly attention to avoid mats and tangles. These dogs need plenty of physical activity and they're not an early developer just so you know. So they require frequently more training, you know, than a lot of other breeds simply because of this. These dogs are very good with children but they can be rambunctious with, you know, smaller ones. They can also be very good with other pets with the exception of birds. Now the Irish Water Spaniel is also often called the clown of the Spaniel family, probably because of that peak of curly hair that happens, you know, right between their eyes. The Water Spaniel is the largest of the breeds of Spaniels and probably also the rarest. As the name implies, their all-time favorite activity is swimming, but they also enjoy retrieving. Distinctive features of this breed are their liver-colored coat that's colored, covered excuse me, in curls all over except for their face and tail which are smooth. And this dog breeds smooth rat tail is another characteristic feature of the breed. Their coat is very unusual in that it's comprised of hair, not fur like most other dog breeds, which means that these dogs need to have regular haircuts just like people. Their best home is indoors with access to a large fenced in yard. And these dogs can be good with children and other pets if socialized with them early on. Now the Labrador Retriever is a dog that loves to be busy and they're among the easiest to train of all dog breeds. These dogs are also one of the AKC's most popular breeds. Labs are universal pets. They're adaptive enough to be a service dog, a hunting dog, or a companion dog, yet they have the perfect personality to enjoy swimming, honey, or, you know, or maybe even just a game of fetch. These dogs were originally from Newfoundland and they have long been renowned for their work as water dogs, retrieving game from, you know, from uh, water or wooded areas. These dogs have a short, easy to care for, waterproof coat, that thick, otter-shaped tail, and they can come dressed in yellow, black, or chocolate. The Labrador Retriever can thrive in almost any climate and they're, uh, they are prone to obesity, just so you know, so be careful with food and exercise. The best home for these dogs is inside with the family. They're also very good with kids and other pets. 
Now the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever may be one uh, breed of sporting dog that a lot of people aren't familiar with. Now this is the smallest of the retriever breeds. If you have cats or other small pets, expect a great deal of exercise because the toller will chase them around your yard or house all the time. These dogs were developed in Canada to lure those curious ducks toward their lake shores and river banks with its playful antics, and this is called tolling. Now the intelligent toller is an all-round dog. Although he is relatively easy to train and very easy, easy to please, or w very willing to please, they can also be very stubborn and creative in the ways in which he'll disobey you. These dogs are great hunters, uh, and they are very, very agile competitors, and they are also very affectionate and playful. Now the pointer is an animal whose every movement shows him to be a very wide awake, hard driving, hunting dog and they possess the stamina and courage and the desire to simply just go, go, go. These were the first dog used to stand game. And these dogs seem to acquire their hunting instincts around the age of two months. Uh, these dogs are very loyal and they have a very true devotion and, to man. These dogs are also very agile and athletic. They are gentle with children, which makes them a very good, you know, family dog. And because they need a lot of exercise, it's not recommended for a small apartment. So as long as you have a lot of room for them to exercise in, or if you can give them regular exercise on a very frequent basis, they, these dogs make very good pets. And the Spinoni Italiano is an excellent ret retriever by nature. These dogs are very muscular, uh, they're vigorous, robust, and they are just a, a multi-purpose gun dog. These dogs can also be found used for hunting, pointing, and retrieving. The Spinoni is considered to be a very ancient breed that can be traced back to approximately 500 BC. These dogs have a hard texture coat that's also weather resistant. His wiry dense coat and his thick skin enable him to negotiate underbrush and endure cold water that would severely punish most dogs that aren't so naturally armored from the, you know, from the terrible weather. These dogs are very social, they're docile, and they're also very patient. The Spinoni is resistant to fatigue and they are a very experienced hunter on just about any kind of terrain. Now the Sussex Spaniel uh, was among the first ten breeds to be recognized and admitted when the AKC was formed back in excuse me, 1884. Uh, these dogs have existed as a distinct breed for much longer, however. These are the longest and lowest of all the Spaniel breeds. These dogs have a very rich golden liver color, and this is unique to this particular breed, and its coat also requires a fair amount of grooming every week, just so you'll know. The Sussex Spaniel loves the freedom of the country, but they'll easily fit in as a city dog as long as they get a lot of exercise. These are a very loving, devoted companion, especially for families with children. The Sussex Spaniel places his family or friends first and is somewhat cautious with strangers, but once you're accepted as a friend of a Sussex Spaniel, you'll have a friend for life. Now the Vishla is a natural hunter and these dogs are endowed with an excellent nose and an above average ability to take to training. These dogs are sometimes also referred to as the Hungarian Pointer, and these dogs are also excellent swimmers. L these dogs are lively, they're gentle-mannered, they're very, very affectionate, and they're t very sensitive, and these dogs also love everyone. The Vishla comes in two coat types, smooth or wire-haired. Now, they are small enough to be very good at sporting dogs, you know, for a city apartment, but remember, like most other sporting dog breeds, they do need a lot of daily exercise if you do have a small apartment. Now the Weimaraner is known for its hunting prowess, especially as that of a personal hunting companion. These dogs originated in the early 19th century and are often referred to as the Grey Ghost or the Silver Ghost because of that beautiful mouse-colored coat that they have. They really prefer being a member of the family uh, over being that of a kennel dog. Although they're considered hunting dogs, they don't like living outdoors. So be forewarned, this dog does like to bark. The Weimaraner has a, uh, a dock tail, a level top line, webbed feet, and very long lobular ears that have a slight fold. These dogs can be good with children under the right supervision, however small pets, birds, and cats are not recommended with this breed. Now the Well Springer Spaniel is a very energetic sporting dog and they need a lot of daily ex exercise. These are an active dog and they're very loyal and affectionate as well. Although quite reserved with stranger, these dogs aren't timid or shy or they're not unfriendly. 
They do make an excellent pet for people that have children, um, although puppies may have too much energy and strength for very, very, very small children. The Welsh Springer Spaniel make wonderful house dogs and they can live in the city apartments as long as they're given lots of attention and lots and lots of daily exercise. Now the next dog we'll talk about in the sporting dog breed class is the wire-haired pointing Griffon. Now these dogs are particularly adapted for swampy country where its harsh coat is, provides ex excellent protection. They are very, very, very good swimmers. They love to play in the water. They have a hard and a very coarse coat. Uh, it's, it's not curly or woolly, but they do have a thick undercoat of fine hair which gives a dog an, a rather unkempt or, or, you know, unbrushed appearance. These dogs shed little to no hair and they need to be groomed professionally at least once or twice a year. These dogs excel as a pointer in the field or as a retriever in the water, and their nickname of Supreme Gun Dog is well earned. They have a quick and intelligent mind, and they're very easily trained, and they don't need a tremendous amount of exercise, however, but they are, uh, they are not recommended for apartment life. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. These dogs do need a tremendous amount of exercise. Excuse me, they do need a lot of exercise, and they're not recommended for apartment life. They can be easy to train, they're very devoted to their family, and they do possess friendly temperaments that endear them to them all. If you'd like to learn more about other uh, purebred dog breeds, or if you'd like to learn more about other purebred AKC dog breed groups, please visit my website at pedigreedpups.com. That's www.pedigreedpups.com.